Hi Cancer, thank you for joining me and welcome to this reading for February 2017. I'm very happy you could be here with me. First off, if we get this video to 400 likes by the end of January, I'll be able to make a second love reading for you guys in February in mid-month. So please give me a like for this video so we can do that. Uh, cancer is my Venus sign, so my Venus is in Cancer, so I want to see it. So I'll be leaving a like with my account as well. Anyway, so um, at the end of the video, we're going to be talking about all of the cards and what cards I'm using, as well as a special Valentine's Day giveaway contest. Now, um, on the side here, I have some links with regard to dates and uh planetary transition times. So let's go over them just really quickly. This is going to give you a general overview of the environment that we are in. However, at 8 a.m. Pacific, that's California time, I do daily uh, live tarot and astrology readings. So come join us. Um, so first off, Venus on uh, February 3rd will be moving into your 10th house. Whenever the Venus is in the 10th house, you are going to be growing a lot with regard to your career and social status. Also, at this time, you're going to see Mars there as well. So this should be a really wonderful time for you with regard to your career. I would pay attention really closely, Cancer, because Venus is about to go retrograde. And when she does go retrograde, this is kind of the area of life where this she will be um, kind of giving you second chances to. So really pay attention to anything that maybe you can't address now that you may want to address another day. On the third, also, we have Juno transiting into your seventh house. Now, Cancer, I know how much... Pluto in the seventh house affects you. Uh, but with Juno in the seventh house, this is the asteroid associated with ideal partnerships, soulmates. She is the wife of Jupiter, women's rights, um, equity, those kinds of things. And so her in the seventh house is going to improve your relationship uh, circumstances. On the 4th of February, just the following day, uh, Sarah, the goddess of nourishment, moves into the 11th house. Friends will reciprocate in really good and abundant energy. If you take a look at the asteroids, there's a lot of trines over us. So when considering the asteroids, the entire month of February is actually covered in grand trines. Grand trines are harmonious energy that's working in different elements. And so you can be looking forward to uh, enjoying that this, this month. On the 6th, we have Jupiter retrograde. Now, this happens every year. It lasts for about four months. And so what you're seeing is uh, Jupiter retrograde in your fourth house of family and home. This is going to give you a second chance at rehashing things with family members and home type of issues. We'll be talking about that more when uh, it does go retrograde on the 6th. Now, uh, the retrograde, by the way, will last until the 9th of June, so it's a four-month period. On the 7th, uh, we see Mercury moving into uh, an area of your life that is associated with change. Uh, it's the 8th house, and then also it has a huge correlation with sex. Mercury, you know, sexually communicative time for you. The sun is here as well. Um, you could be also uh, communicating a lot with other people with regard to their money. So this is an important transit as well. On the 10th, we have a full moon and it's with an eclipse. This is happening in your second house. That means financial matters are either culminating or they, you need to uh, eclipse them out. We'll be talking about the eclipse at 6.30 p.m. Pacific on the main channel. Um, and we'll be doing an all signs reading for eclipse and full moon. That's on February 2nd, about a week before the eclipse. Again, you can see these grand trines that are really off of the asteroids like Ceres and Juno. However, they will add a very harmonious level and el energy to the transit. Okay, on the 18th, the sun moves into Pisces, and this is the beginning of a really large transit that you're going to feel really comfortable in. Um, there's going to be a large stelium. A stelium is when many planets are together in one house. The sun is there on the 18th, and on the 25th, Mercury joins, and then on the 26th, we see the new moon happening here in your ninth house. The ninth house has a lot to do with philosophy, long distance travel. Here we have your 
uh, south node which is actually maybe going back to your home going back to family to kind of rehash and work over whatever it is that you have been dealing with or any family issues that are outstanding on february 9th and the 23rd uh, we're going to have a love and sexuality reading again at that 6.30 p.m. Thursday night time slot Pacific time. I encourage you to join us and uh, I hope you enjoy. So let's take a look at the astrology and the tarot. Sorry about my, I'm perching here. So here the first card is a oracle card and we see the battle of the blues take steps towards positive change. So it looks as though Cancer are once again feeling the impact of past experiences, especially with that stelium in your ninth house. That's philosophy. That's the way that you think. So maybe this is a good time and an opportune time for you to rehash any negative think think patterns or belief systems and start thinking about them in a more proactive way. Love could be on the upswing for you, especially if you have an established partner. That partnership could be coming together much more seriously now. And Jupiter retrograde in your family house, the fourth house, will also stimulate and en encourage you to feel uh, open towards rehashing or improving circumstances with your family. So let's take a look at the tarot cards. So the first card here is the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is a Pi uh, Scorpio, uh, excuse me, Sagittarius, maybe a Pisces or Scorpio. Um, uh, Sagittarius, Leo or Aries. She's quite beautiful. These cards are gorgeous. This is the Cosmic Tarot. But the Queen of Wands represents a person who has a lot of energy. You can kind of stereotypically think of her as someone who does YouTube or someone who does a lot of marketing, someone who's really great at PR. She says a lot by saying little and she seems to be upbeat even though she's dealing with serious things. She's vivacious and she's motivational. Maybe she's your trigger point for wanting to be the brighter cancer that you are. And also with Venus in your 10th house, you are promenading that fiery Aries energy that Venus is in, also Mars. So Queen of Wands could be you. Let's take a look at the second card. So we have the Ace of Cups. I love this card. The Ace of Cups has become my favorite card and it's stalking me everywhere. I love it. It just means that new friends and new relationships are coming into your life. This could be a Queen of Wands relationship. I mean, if you're vibing at that level right now for the next month, the transit of Venus lasts 28 days, maybe 23 days. I get confused, but uh, the transit is super quick, right? So with it being super quick, you want to make sure that you use that energy well. And so maybe you will be drawing to you more Queen of Wands type friends and energies or a relationship possibly as well. I actually forgot to throw my witch dice because I was too excited to read for you guys. We picked the order of the readings by a poll so that it's not personal, the reason that you're uh, getting read at this time. So your first message is a gift and the second message is distorted thoughts. Maybe somebody's giving you a gift that you're not feeling so comfortable with. Maybe something is on the table that you need to get familiar with and comfortable with at this time. Here is your message. So here we have Seven of Swords. So I think that you're you're kind of actually hesitant to commit, which is really actually common for Cancers. Cancers may feel as though that we're opening up to, you know, people um, and really eager to form solid connections, but because we're so vulnerable, and I'm speaking as a we because my Venus is in Cancer, because we, we feel so vulnerable, then at certain times we may actually be quite distant. Um, Seven of Swords is actually um, moon in uh, Aquarius. So it's that kind of lofty searching, the melancholy and the infinite sadness kind of vibe. The, the treachering through the universe and trying to find meaning in it all with finding that there is no specific meaning to things. So you're kind of lost in the abyss of your own kind of longing, taking steps towards positive change. I don't feel like you're walking away from relationships, but some of you may be. Here is your next message. We have the Ace of Pentacles. So the all of the Aces in this deck are beautiful. The Ace of Pentacles signifies a new physical change, a new physical direction. 
The Ace of Pentacles with the Ace of Cups so close together in a reading, change of places. So look for changes of work or changes of home. Although with Venus and Mars in your 10th house, I would suggest that this is a beginning uh, phase with your career. If you are changing work, I would suspect that you're moving on to something that is much more satisfying. I think that what you are dealing with, the energy that you are seeking throughout this month, is one of feeling satisfaction, feeling fulfillment. Here is your next card. And we have the King of Swords. Mm, so he's a Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra male. Someone who is very good with thoughts and ideas. Someone who's actually quite um, in admiration of you. I feel they feel that they see you in a positive light. This could be a boss, but it could be an intimate relationship also. I think there's a disconnect between yourself and this person. When you are really within your own feelings about things and really feeling the impact of your thoughts and ideas, that there's a disconnect in drawing that boundary between yourself and someone else and so therefore you have to kind of work extra hard or take some time in order to draw that bridge between yourself and them um, i feel as though this person understands that you are having feelings and emotions however i think that that's an area of life that they don't feel confident in or maybe they don't know how to manage appropriately so they kind of draw back so if you're feeling a dis a distance between yourself and your partner that might be the problem uh, or the reason why that doesn't mean that they're leaving it just means that they don't have anything to say you know what they say if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all speaking of the devil so this is a capricorn card so if you have a capricorn in your life that's resonating then that's it what's going on in capricorn well, we have that Juno transit right there. So this is reminding us of the seventh house. I'm looking at the chart. I don't bring up the chart all the time, but here you see Juno and Capricorn in your seventh house. Your seventh house is always ruled by Capricorn. So this is mostly true if you're a Cancer rising or if you have Capricorn in your seventh house. But if you but if you feel as though maybe there's this intense pull, you know, at this time and connection between yourself, possibly the King of Swords, or this is an advisor who sees your circumstances and has a strong opinion and is able to give you a good opinion with some good thoughts about how you need to approach things. Maybe you're being swept away again and he says, oh, wait a minute, you have to really kind of make sure that the things that you want are what you want. And I think that those messages have resonated with you, have have resonated with you and they're coming up. And maybe this is the distorted thoughts that the witch dice had suggested. Because if the king of swords is saying, maybe watch your step and you're like, but I love him I love her and if you're throwing yourself caution to the wind he says in the middle that you he sees the core message in the middle that you have to te take steps towards a positive change right you can't you can't throw caution to the wind because then you're gonna left be left scrambling if the circumstance or situation is not what you had hoped it would be so this is really a mentor a confidant someone who protects you also be careful when you're dealing with mentors or friends giving you advice and stuff uh, you know make sure that they don't clamp you down with their own obsessions and their own belief systems always draw healthy boundaries between yourself and others so this is the romantic tarot the six of cups Six, Six of Cups is about reflection, about love, love coming back into town, uh, a second chance at love. We're really re, uh, reaching that season when Venus goes retrograde. She will give opportunity for second bouts at love, although oftentimes that has to do with more karmic relationships that need to be resolved. But with the Six of Cups, maybe you are feeling some kind of pull and emotional connection. Particularly if you're a Cancer male, you're really attracted to the Queen of Wands. And you're feeling really kind of maybe impacted. If you're the Queen of Wands, then maybe you are the one who's feeling all these emotions. We'll see here with the corner pillar cards to see what the messages are. Here is your next card. So we have the Page of Discs, and funny enough, this card came up several times. This is also the Princess of Discs. So depending on what your age is or who you're relating with, this could be a Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn female. But if you're younger and you're dating um, 
around, then this could be a young man also, but he would be quite young, probably under 23, 24 years old. So this could also mean a new project or idea. Maybe that's what you're say saying goodbye to because you're still uh, trapped in your pursuit of love. Now, if you're in an established relationship, this can all be happening within your relationship as well. So I wouldn't feel as though, you know, you're, you're stepping uh, away from something only if you're single. You might be, you know, your partner may have given you indication that love is blossoming for your partnership again and you're making decisions in your everyday life that are kind of away from certain things because you really desperately still want that love. Be really careful that the feelings and emotions that you are having are not motivated by these kind of wanton blues. Make sure that you are not um, making decisions in order to kind of band-aid the core issue. First address your sadness and then, uh, and then move forward towards happiness. That's the best way to do it. Um, however, this opportunity does seem quite credible. The Ace of Pentacles with the Page of Discs, something that may require that you give a little bit before and then receive in return. Now, this always reminds me of Jethro Tull with, with Ian Anderson on the flute. He dresses very much like this. I know he plays a character, but this reminds me of him as well. So this could be some type of um, some type of offer that is being given to you and um, and being offered up to you in some kind of um, way. However, this could be a solicitation in and in a funny way it'll turn around at a certain point and lead you to uh, to a prospect leads you to success. Here is your next card. We have the ace of wands. And so this is a new beginning. Now when we have three aces, I know it's different decks, but we still want to consider this. This means success is coming for you very quickly now, Cancer. Three aces in the reading is probably my favorite combination, I would have to say. It just means uh, success is coming for you. I would suspect now I feel confident to tell you that February should be a really amazing month for you. It's going to be a fly, fly by night. No, that's a wrong... Um, adage. It's going to be a very fast paced month that's going to lead you uh, to be happy through the whole month. So in fact, uh, positive steps towards change is going to be an easy step for you to take. And I think that this is more and more starting to look like the like the attitude that you adopt this month. Here is the next card and we have another page, the Page of Wands. So Queen of Wands, Page of Wands, the Devil. There's a lot of passion and energy flying around. I don't know if you go out personally, but if you're going out, you know, and hanging out with people, this will be a time when you go out more, socialize, you know, get in with the party. There's also gifts that are being given and exchanged. To me, this really feels like, you know, a trifecta, like these three people going out and having a really nice time celebrating you know um, and maybe you're reflecting upon times when you did do that with people at this time but I feel as though February is drawing you to that direction that you're going out that be you're, you're being presented generously I do feel like there's going to be a, a sexual advance um, that somebody's going to make a sexual pass at you or you'll be the one who will be thinking quite sexually at this time. For you with Pluto in the seventh house and Juno there, there's instant sexual attraction. And let me tell you, when Pluto moves into your eighth house, you're going to be even more uh, directed sexually in your thoughts and ideas. So this is not going to ease up. And for many of us, uh, we will never see um, a time past Pluto in Aquarius. Like, I think I'll be like 70 years old by the time Pluto finishes Aquarius. So, you know, just get ready for it. That devil does mean sex. And so sex on the brain is a good thing. I really suggest that you have... Um, uh, some practice with Tantra or health, healthy meditative practices around sex so that it doesn't go into obsessions or unhealthy practices. But um, when adopted in a good way, then you'll feel very fulfilled. In fact, the Page of Wands can be quite a sexual card, you know, feeling that libido and that charge. So here's some cards that are the foundations or the pillars of your reading. And so let's take a look at the first card. So here we have the King of Swords. I really dislike this card. It's really gross. I, yeah. 
Anyway, so let's put that away. But it's the same guy as it is here, the Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra male. I, I want to put something on it. It's so just here. It's moving her breasts with her his foot. It's really gross. Okay, so there we go. King of Swords. There you go. Shut it down. <laughs> let's shut down that brothel. Okay, so, so we have a Queen of Wands and a King of Wands here. So maybe there's a couple that you aspire to be like, and maybe your partner is also a King of Swords of a different constitution. Um, this could this could be a Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, or this is the same person also. Um, maybe you're seeing one person, your, your partner in one way in one situation and seeing him uh, in another way in another situation. Or maybe this is you, actually. Um, for those of you, um, you may be taking on different personalities, more of this kind of uh, love, passion, energy, a partnership, and then a, a longing and desiring side of your personality when you're thinking about the different things that you want to push forward in the world. Okay, so here is the next card. We have the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords recommends that this is a time to rest, and you must rest in your life this month, Cancer. There's going to be this, I think here in the beginning part of the month, there is a certain degree of just elation and celebration. I think you're, you know you're onto something big. When I used to do yoga a lot, especially Bikrams in the heat, heated rooms, um, I would go in and sometimes I would be so like elated just to be there and so I would just jump in and I would like knock myself out within like three or four postures so I couldn't breathe and so I learned very quickly to pace myself I guess people who run can really identify with that and so um, I learned to take it slow like have that happy moment but take it slow so that you can finish the long distance of the 26 postures and so maybe you too cancer should take that approach this month is you feel really good but don't get don't build yourself up too much make sure that you have enough fuel for the long haul here is your next message so here we have the judgment card. So I love the judgment card. So if three aces are my favorite combination, then the judgment card is probably my favorite card. The judgment card represents a choice to go back to something or someone. In fact, some of you cancers will be moving for that effect. So you know what I said about two aces before? Well, these two aces, regardless of this one, can signify that you're moving back into a situation or circumstance. If you are, just really make sure that the dynamics are balanced and, again, that you're not stepping into some un imbalanced family relationship, okay? So make sure that you hold your own power going through the situation. Here is your next card and the last card for the reading. Do you know what this is? The Ace of Cups. So now we have four aces, separate decks. I mean, four aces is supreme success, but we have two aces, two new relationships, two opportunities, just abundance flowing to you in every which way direction, taking steps in many directions towards positive change. When you take steps towards positive change, it's always a good idea to decentralize and then find whatever sticks, whatever sticks, you stick to it, and then whatever falls away, falls away as well, especially in the career. So we're talking about a lot about love and relationships lots of different positive ideas with the stelium in the ninth house but also in career in your career there's new opportunities and i would not necessarily kind of back off of that area of your life you will definitely need that race rest you will definitely need to back off sometimes so that you don't go a little crazy going a little bit crazy too is uh is okay you know if you allow yourself to just kind of um fall into the flow of things then you will have these things come up and you'll have natural responses to them and so many times overthinking is what paralyzes us and so natural responses are kind of the best thing here are some tokens i just put them randomly if somebody was asking me why do i put them in certain direct it's just when i feel like there's a little bit of a clarifier needed and I just picked them randomly as well so this is coming up a lot this is the sign for the autumn and so so this is where we have our south hemisphere north hemisphere talk so those of you who are in autumn right now we're starting autumn in the southern hemisphere this could be right now but for most of us in the northern hemisphere <coughs> excuse me this means um, the 
September months. This means that there's a whole pattern that's initiating with the eclipses and so you're initiating in a new direction and that's going to lead to something even as far as um, next winter when uh, Capricorn is uh, ruling again. So that will be, we just finished Capricorn, so December to January. So maybe one relationship leads to another and then another and then you have a series of experiences. Maybe this is considering a breakup. Maybe this is considering an immediate breakup to w to lead you towards, but I don't think it's going to be a breakup that has to do with like drama or terrible things. I think that you have something in mind and you're like, okay, now it's time for me to go because I've been there. I've been sad and I'm not going to be sad again. So here we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius people will allow you to open up your consciousness, open up your mind and really think about the possibilities in your life. And here is the, oh, we, this kid's been coming up a lot. Everybody's getting love, love, love. So I think that what what you may be stepping away from and tarot cards they don't tell you shoulds or maybes or they tell you what is so i think that there is some type of offer here and a good offer and i think you're kind of focusing on something else too much and this is a humble offer you know like he's a he's shoeless he's he's a poor man right and he's playing the flute he's ian anderson you know and he's just chilling but I think that you'll have a second chance. And this, I, I suspect that the second chance will mostly come when Venus is retrograde. So some humble offer is coming to you. I think you're going to play it off. Maybe because you just need to rest or because you're still embedded in another situation that has your heart inspired. And I think that after a while, you'll come to realize the value of this offer. In fact, me, I'll make a suggestion that probably these three cards together is probably the most foundational and positive um, aspect of this reading. Although here, there's something really quite passionate coming up as well. So Cancer's going to have their cake and eat it too, <laughs> I think. Four aces, just lots of, uh, lots of changing places, um, lots of lovers potentially, uh, lots of uh, inspiration and passion. Um, so pretty balanced, two kings, two pages, a queen. So there's, there's really enough love to go around for everyone. And you just need to really step out of any funk that you're going through. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, oh yeah, so the, the other witch's dice, remember it told you to um, to look for a uh, gift. And I feel like this is the gift someone's giving you. But look for, the, for someone who's asking for help first. Somebody might be asking for help and that might turn around and be something really quite generous for you. Anyway, please give me a like for this video. If we reach 400, I'll do a follow-up love reading. That's that heart reading for Valentine's Day. And stay tuned for what cards we were reading with, as well as a giveaway info. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, and thanks for watching the video. I just thought that I would add at the end of the video what decks I used and any announcements. Uh, I think that that will work well for people. So the decks I used are the Romantic Tarot. Okay. And then the Tarot of Sexual Magic. We've seen that on my sex show. It's a really popular deck around YouTube too. The Cosmic Tarot. Totally in love with this deck. So beautiful. And the Mystical Wisdom card deck. So if you want any of those, then uh, please check it out. I also used my witches dice and also the tokens now if you guys are interested i can do a contest for valentine's day and so if you guys would like then i can uh, give you guys a little kit sent to your home uh, to promote love and i'll make the kit myself and it'll have a whole bunch of goodies probably a twin crystal i know a lot of people were really wanting a twin crystal maybe a spirit doll I'll make a spirit doll for love so whatever kind of mix i can ship anywhere in north america for free if you live outside of north america and want to participate then you can simply pay for the difference in the for the difference of the cost of the uh, shipping. So I'll be happy to do that. So all you need to do is uh, watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Like and uh, subscribe to my channel and leave comment on each of those videos telling me what that this is your sun, moon, or rising. And if you want to leave an extra comment, that's fine as well. Like that 
your feedback or whatnot. Anyway, so I guess that's the contest. We'll draw on the 14th for a winner. Uh, wish you guys luck in uh, up to the 14th. Uh, lots of love. And thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.